Good evening, St. Catherine School community. Welcome to the 2022 annual general meeting. Uh, it's always interesting with technology how uh, it never really wants to work when you need it to work. Everything that I do for masses every Friday, I did the same this evening, but for whatever the reason, technology didn't want to work, um, work as well as it normally did, but hopefully people can see us now and uh, we'll get on with our meeting. And behind me, you should see the agenda, or you will see the agenda soon. And um, as you see there, we are gonna have a prayer. Father's gonna speak. Um, I'm gonna uh, go over the principal's report. Um, we have some PEC introductions and reports, financial report, and of course, the tuition draw. Uh, with the tuition draw, you have to pay attention and see if you can answer the skill testing question at the end. So with that, uh, thank you all for, for coming. Uh, hopefully this may be the last year we have to do this um, virtually and streaming. Uh, it'd be nice to get back to the day of uh, gone, days gone by before COVID where we get to so we socialize and we could you know have some appetizers and maybe have some wine and all that sort of stuff um, uh, as we did and enjoyed many, many years ago. Not many, I guess two years ago. Seems like a long time. With that, uh, Father Chisholm, I'd like to ask him to come up and uh, lead us in prayer. Thank you, Mr. Brophy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for all that you've given us here at St. Catharines. We particularly thank you for our families, our teachers, Mr. Brophy, that we can build a good Catholic school, which means it is both good academically and good in living the faith. And so we ask your presence as AGM that we can bring these, these things together and that we can recommit ourselves to, to celebrating our parish community, our school community, and to be people of God who share with each other your love, your joys. We ask this in the name of our, your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. In the, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. It says now I'm supposed to give a, a pastor's report. Now, this has been a, a challenging year for myself, and perhaps more challenging for Mr. Brophy and the, the staff, and keeping our school safe, keeping it a place where children can come and learn and, and, and grow. And as a as the pastor, of course, my interest is in our school as a Catholic school. I am the vicar, the fiscal vicar for Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of the Vancouver, so I am committed to Catholic schools. But it's important that people realize that sending your child to a Catholic school is not a full Catholic education. It is in living your faith on a regular basis. You know, the last few years we've had, we've had a shutdown, we've come up on, in small numbers, but now I think we're getting back to to more regular services and times, and just encourage you that, to bring your children to church, to recognize that what we're giving them here in St. Catharines doesn't work without the parish and without you, the family, that we can lay the foundations that will allow your children to live a Christian life, a Catholic life, not just for the moment, but for the rest of their lives and ultimately to be with God for all eternity. So I thank you for your commitment to Catholic education, your commitment to the St. Catherine School itself, and, and, and to everybody who attends it, whether they're, they're staff or families. We particularly look forward to the new families coming in next year. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Father Chisholm. Uh, as we move on to my report, those are the um, few things that I'm going to be speaking about. Uh, COVID update, personnel um, for next year, 2022-23. Uh, talk about enrollment, extracurricular activities, target project, and then just to wrap things up a little bit. Uh, first of all, with the COVID updates, I think, hopefully, we are, we're on a positive note. Uh, with the restrictions gatherings being uh, rescinded, we... we um, 
we still have to abide by the 50% capacity rule, but uh, it is much better than, than what it was. And it enabled us the other day to have our, our assembly. Uh, we had a full assembly, um, and it was just, it was the first time in two years, and, and it marked a, a huge change, I believe, in, in our school community. And um, it, it was great to see all the students, all the staff here at once. And sometimes you take, take things for granted. You, you get into a routine, well, we don't have assemblies, no big deal, uh, and we carry on. But it really comes home when you actually bring it back and you realize how much you've missed over those two years. And even though we get used to it and we put in these different things in place, it, it's, it's not near as good as it was. And um, looking forward to that to continuing, uh, hopefully with masses after spring break, we'll, we'll uh, have the full, uh, full classes, uh, complement of classes here. And uh, we get some parents back again. I, I felt a little sheepish saying, saying no to parents who want to come to Ash Wednesday mass. Um, but I think after, after spring break, we'll be able to open that up and uh, just allow people to come uh, to mass uh, on Fridays as they did prior. Um, a couple other things, uh, Pancake Day. Who knew Pancake Day could mark such a, a big event, I think, in, in the lives of kids? Because the first time that there's only two classes, but the first time, I think, in a long time where they did come and kind of gather and just enjoy uh, what were absolutely fantastic pancakes, um, all the trimmings and um, things I've never seen put on pancakes, but the kids absolutely loved them. And uh, kudos to all the parents who uh, organized that. Um, it was a huge success. Today, uh, Mr. Panas on the grade sevens, they did um, spaghetti bridges and they streamed that. And we had some parents coming in and it was, you know, I, I think everybody's is, is hungry for that socialization. And, um, a lot of parents came out to see the spaghetti bridges, whereas in the past we may have only had a few. Uh, today we must have had 12 to 15 parents coming out uh, viewing that. Um, obviously with the, these restrictions, we don't make them up, as people know. We, we follow whatever the Ministry of, of Education and the Public Health Authority gives us. So whatever it is that they, um, they tell us to do, we, we have to abide by that. Whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, that's, that's not for hear or, or, or debate. It's just what we have to follow. And, you know, there is some more um, talk of restrictions, more restrictions being lifted. There's talk of that occurring sometime either before spring, spring break, the announcement, or, or in the middle of spring break. Um, it's always fun when it's in the middle of spring break, then you got to scramble to try to figure it all out. But uh, I can't control that one either. But uh, we're looking forward to, you know, and all this is obviously based on, on data and numbers that, they, that the health authority and the Ministry of Education has. And, and we're looking forward to those things changing, again, for, for the positive. You know, more people are, being, are, are outside in this um, better weather, so on and so forth, and the numbers in hospitalizations and all that sort of thing uh, are going down. So that's, a, again, a positive thing, a very positive thing. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's time for us to start planning. You know, I was talking to Miss Keneal. She's uh, planning about planning to have her Mother's Day tea again, which is a, just a, um, a fantastic community building event. You know, I was talking to another parent outside. You know, I think, you know, maybe in April before the you know the walkathon, maybe back to normal. Maybe we should uh, organize um, a little party. You know, Mr. Brophy might be organizing a party. We'll see how that's all going to play out. And just something simple, where you come, you gather, you get some sausages and um, buns and you go and you gather and you socialize with, with each other. Some, maybe some evening, maybe just before the walkathon. I'm kind of thinking about the date, uh, the, what is it, 20, 22nd, 23rd, whatever that Thursday is before the walkathon. And then maybe we continue on with the camp out. We used to have the camp out outside where if people wanted to camp out, they put tents up, they put, um, you know, RVs in the parking lot, whatever it is you want to do. And uh, combine that with a nice, um, uh, you know, back to school barbecue type atmosphere. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. But, you know, things, wheels are turning now that we're able to do these things. And I think there's definitely a need for that. If I move on to the, uh, the staff for next year, I don't anticipate any uh, changes in personnel. There may be just a slight little change in terms of um, grade three, uh, Mr. Brophy's fun Fridays or no fun Fridays. Yeah, the grade threes are really realizing that it is no fun and they're kind of kicking me out. So there might be a little change there with grade three. Um, 
and uh, Miss Adams will uh, uh, possibly be working with Miss Mortimer on that, but uh, that shouldn't change too much other than that slight change. Um, then another one is a library technician. We're looking to hire a library technician um, <clears throat> to kind of work the, um, the, the library side of things. Uh, if anyone of you are interested, you know, come see me. We'll have some conversations. Um, just, and I'm happy to make that announcement, really, because uh, I think that's a testament to the school itself and the community when you don't have a whole lot of changeover. People, I believe and I hope, um, are happy here and they're content here. And that's a, a great thing for the educational program at the school when we don't have a whole lot of change in personnel. We have people here coming to work, doing the best job that they can, and they do. Uh, there's a lot of great care and a lot of great work that gets done in and around St. Catharines by the, not only the staff, but the parents too, but uh, I'm, I'm on the staff here. And um, yeah, it, it just uh, allows for, for students to have better relationships with these individuals who spend a lot of time with, with, with your kids. And um, to not have much changeover, it, it, it's a great, Thing. It's, a, it's a, certainly a feather in the cap of St. Catharines to, to, um, to have that. So that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And, and obviously, too, um, I want to thank all the staff for their um, uh, continued dedication and contribution to St. Catharines School. Um, your work is, is, is wonderful, great work, and uh, uh, your efforts don't go unnoticed, and it's definitely appreciated. And as I always say, the kids are the, the beneficiaries of, of our hard work. So that's a, a wonderful thing. Next, with enrollment. Enrollment is always an important thing with, uh, with Catholic schools, as, as people know, and you may find out more in the, in the financials. Uh, it has to do with our, our funding structure. So our, our enrollment is important. Um, you know, since we only get 50% funding from the government, uh, we're fortunate to have a parish subsidy, we're fortunate to, uh, to have a successful fundraisers, and we, are, um, and we, we charge, charge tuition to make up that difference. But enrollment is key. And the last number of years, we've had a healthy enrollment, and that uh, will continue next year um, in, in all the grades. Father Chisholm and I, we just um, uh, finished our interviewing for kindergarten, and it seems that we'll have a... Um, Pretty much a full class, if not a full class, there or here uh, next year. So that's uh, great news on the enrollment front. As I move on to extracurricular news, um, a variety of things that are, are again continuing to open up. And now that um, we're kind of moving to the outside um, seasons, we have uh, girls' soccer going on for grades um, four through seven. And um, you know, since it's outside, spectators are more than welcome to come along and, and uh, cheer our, our teams on. Um, we also have a track and field that is beginning. Um, um, the, the, Mr. Jones is working hard on getting the lines painted out there. I'll speak a little more about the, the, the track later, but the, the track is looking good. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, um, a lot of person hours get put into the, the track and field program because it is a big program. There's a great number of students involved, which is a good thing, and a great number of staff involved. So it is a very important, um, um, great program. It's, it's a wonderful program that we are doing, we offer for the kids. Uh, next, uh, this occurs all year long. Miss Dreyers, uh, every Wednesday, she's working hard with our concert band. And she's, uh, you know, constantly coming in here, uh, say, Wednesday mornings. And she's approximately, I think, about 15 students. Um, and they're going over various uh, songs and pieces and arrangements. And I'm sure, I know they did one... Um, uh, performance uh, that was attached to the, band, the, uh, the Christmas concert. I'm sure they'll be doing another concert of some sort, whether it's live streamed or maybe it's in person. Maybe that'll be another um, event where we can uh, open their doors to, uh, to having our kids, uh, kids perform and not only have our kids perform, but have our parents see our kids perform. That's, uh, that's a very important one. Uh, just back to um, any, obviously any of the schedules too, uh, whether it be track and field or soccer, they're always on our school calendar. So if you're wondering what's going on, if there's practice, when it is, please see the school calendar and uh, you'll find out. Um, next, if we continue on to just, these are some of the things that it has to do with the target project. And I'm gonna just go off screen for a quick second. I forgot my little sticky. Um, but yeah, with the target project, what we've done or worked on is just basically, uh, not basically, it's, it's pretty intensive really. Uh, it's a huge project. Building the track, 
doing drainage out on the, um, the intermediate field. I guess that's a, that way, the intermediate field. And um, extending and widening the sidewalks um, around the, the kind of the perimeter of the school. Uh, so that was, is a huge project. Uh, we still are in the process of trying to figure out when we're going to put the, the rubber down on the, uh, the track. Uh, might happen spring break, break uh, if not spring break. Probably won't be spring break because we haven't been getting or having hearing about that. It'll likely happen in the summertime. So um, the whole the whole track will be uh, be rubber coating on it. Same with the long jump run up um, area. Um, there's been if you haven't seen there, there's been a number. All the sod has been put down and just kind of waiting for the better better weather so that will all take. So that's. Um, yeah, it, when it's all finished, it, it will look just uh, just fantastic. Just with that, there's you know a few other things that we may look at doing. We may try to get some seating areas uh, out there. Um, it just kind of stands to reason that we want people to come watch these events, so we need to have a place for them to sit. So we got to look into that. Um, new soccer nets, the old one, other ones there. I think they're probably a little too big, and um, yeah, they just need a little bit of a upgrade for sure. So. Uh, with that. Now the with, with target projects and just this is more like for people that have maybe are new to the school and um, um, or maybe people that have, have forgotten but throughout the um, years I've been around and I know it's going on long before I even came uh, came here but we've had very successful fundraisers and the fundraisers and in, in conjunction with um, positive enrollment numbers allowed us to do a great number of projects around the school um, and, you know, and I'll just list them just so people can kind of refresh your, your, your mind as to, as to what actually we did do. Again, some of those, it's, it's like COVID, we don't remember what we did. Um, but um, the, the primary playground, that was all resurfaced and a whole new primary structure was, was built there. Uh, we bought a new school bus. We re, uh, revamped the library. Um, uh, we painted the school inside and out. We're building a track. Um, I'm sure I'll forget some of these. Obviously, there's, there's various resources, too, that, that this uh, enables us to, to purchase. Chromebooks uh, on grade 7, iPads. Um, and sometimes, too, it, it often gets forgotten about. The, the unsung heroines uh, it enables us to um, uh, employ and hire a number of, of, of wonderful, excellent educational assistants. And that is just another feather in our cap with regard to our educational program. It, it allows any student um, who may be needing some extra assistance to have that extra assistance, one-on-one, -on -one, small groups, uh, inside the classroom, outside the classroom, and, and just, again, strengthens our academic program. So by doing all those things, it really, uh, hopefully allows our school our, our students to feel feel uh, proud of their school and, and you know they, they feel proud coming here to St. Catharines and uh, it also strengthens our, our academic program so in in kind of both those things a strong enrollment and, and, and a wonderful uh, generosity of parents it uh, certainly helps the um, overall academic program um, at, at St. Catharines so it is something that, that works uh, works very well. And just before I turn you over to Christy Daniels, our, our chairperson of the PEC, uh, I just want to uh, thank all the parents for all the work that they do around the school. Um, and, you know, um, it is a commitment to be a part of St. Catherine's School. I, I get it. Uh, there is sacrifices that you have to make to be part of St. Catherine's School. I do get that. I do get that your time is uh, limited, like everyone else's time is limited. And we, you know, a lot of times we ask you to do extra, um, whether it be fundraising or whether it be uh, parent participation hours, different projects, different activities. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I, I, I firmly believe that, that through all the work that parents do, that staff do, that pastors do, that parishioners do, um, St. Catharines is, is uh, the uh, uh, excellent school and the kids who come here are getting an excellent education uh, in all areas and we hope that um, parents um, take us up on the opportunities to be involved in, in whatever we offer. Um, again, I, it, 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 um, 
it requires a little more work, you know, getting up earlier to come to practices or later to, to pick up after practice, all those sort of things. But again, we want our kids to be involved. We want our kids to be involved. We want our students to be, in, or our, our parents to be involved and, and our staff to be involved. And, um, and we do have that. Uh, and I think now as this, you know, hopefully COVID is kind of going on the downside, we will get back at that in, um, in even greater, greater ways and, and um, more productive ways. So with that, um, I hope people were paying attention for the skill testing question. And I'll give you one hint before I disappear. It has nothing to do with anything I said. With that, Ms. Daniels. Thank you, Mr. Brophy. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the Parish Education Committee and how it works um, a little bit. We follow the CISFA school board. Um, they set some rules which we follow, pass through, and Mr. Brophy also follows a pass through, and we all work collectively together to make sure that the school is the best that we can make it basically. Um, we have a few new members this year and a few existing members, and it seems to be working very well for everybody. Um, Father Patrick is part of the committee, as well as myself. I'm the chairperson. The vice chairperson is Aaron Salter, treasurer Rebecca Masuhera, secretary Mary Chris Reedman, a PFA chairperson is Mary Stritzel, our maintenance manager is James Cresswell, and our member at large is Jen Spearman. So I just want to say thank you to all the past members who made things very easy for us new members. Thank you, Kara. You were very helpful to me this year. Kara was the chairperson for eight years before me, so she left me with some pretty big shoes to fill, and she has been extremely helpful. So thank you for that. And with that, I am going to pass this on to Rebecca for the financials. Thank you, Christy. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm happy to present the 2020-21 financials. Um, we were in a good position that year, uh, regardless of all the other things that were taking place at the time in the world. Uh, we fared fairly well financially. Um, you can see our revenues were uh, 2.1 million, and those are primarily comprised of government funding, which we take in through the Ministry of Education block grants and the uh, special education grants that we receive. It also contributes from uh, tuition and fundraising for our school and our parish support as well. So all those things comprise what makes up our revenue uh, for our school year. And then on the expense side, we have expenses of just shy of $1.9 million, primarily comprised of uh, instructional ins expenses, which are our teaching salaries and all our educational supplies as well as maintenance, which is our building and our school grounds, and as well as some administration costs as well. So for that financial year, we had a surplus of 208,000. So that was um, a strong finish to a year that we really just didn't know how things were gonna play out when we started it. So with this, um, our successful uh, fundraising and our surplus allowed us to hire additional support staff and also to start our track project. So the surplus from last year, we um, made a motion to reserve those excess funds and apply them to our track project, which, it, you know, there's many components of that, such as bleachers, soccer nets, the field, the irrigation and maintenance of that, um, as well as we also this year uh, have done uh, four new classroom projectors, and uh, we are also continuing to add more classroom lockers. So uh, lots of things... Uh, keeping our uh, maintenance crew busy and um, thank you for um, thank you for all your support and uh, making this a very successful uh, financial year for the school and leaving us in a strong financial position. Thank you.
Okay, so thank you, uh, Rebecca. That's uh, that was wonderful. Now, as you see, the question is, what color was my tie? Still the same color. I just covered it. Um, at the uh, today's what color tie am I wearing today? So it I, it, it was two colors. Okay, I'll, I'll say that. But you get the predominant color, and that'll be fine. You don't have to say two of them. So email your entries to pec at stcatherines.ca. So as that's going on, we will also I'll also do the draw. Christy's coming here with the. Uh, all these people who passed in their, their registrations um, early, this person, whoever it may be, gets one um, month free tuition. It is the Lobo family. So the Lobo family, I believe that's in kindergarten actually, but uh, we will definitely contact you and, um, and let you know. So we do have a winner. And this is for, oh, she won last year too. <laughs> she is sharp. It's the Hutchinsons. They won for um, um, the, the gift card, is it? The, the 165 gift card or 125? No, the 125 was this one. Oh, sorry, and, sorry. And, oh, oh no, my. no, this was the gift card. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, no, the gift card was this one. Okay, my, my fault here. This here, the Lobo family is the gift card. Gift card. Sorry, that was, and, it was in the newsletter. I just messed it up. Hutchinson is the tuition. So we'll figure that all that out. So the Hutchinson was, was the tuition and uh, Lobo was the gift card. And the big reveal, my tie is yellow and a little bit of blue in there. Um, as always, St. Catherine's family, um, if you ever have any questions or any comments, any concerns, my door, I was talking to uh, one of the teachers there, it's never closed. So please, my, you have my emails, all that sort of stuff. If you need to contact me, find a way. I can be here at any particular time, a day or night, that you need me to be here. Um, so please do that. Don't allow something to bother you or to bother your kids or any of that sort of stuff. Um, uh, I'm available to you. And if there's some things going on that you're not terribly impressed with or, or you want to say all positive things, that's all fine too. But um, yeah. We're, we're here to help and try to make this the best educational experience that you, it can be for you and your family. So please, uh, if there's something you need to, to talk about, um, come and see me and it'll all get resolved or we'll do the best we can to resolve it. With that, uh, thank you for those that have uh, attended. Um, I wish you the, the best of, the, of your evening and uh, we'll have a happy Friday. There is no mass tomorrow. We had uh, Ash Wednesday mass uh, on Wednesday, so there's no mass tomorrow. Uh, thank you. Enjoy your evening.